Road to Space. We are live here from Paris tonight to cover the first Ariane 5 launch of the year. Good evening, Emma. Good evening, Baptiste. On board the launcher Miasat 3D, a new communication satellite for Miasat, Malaysia's leading satellite operator that was built by Airbus Defence and Space. And GSAT24, a Cuban communication satellite for New Space India Limited and built by the Indian Space Research Organization. Yes, Baptiste, and in less than 30 minutes, Ariane 5 will be taking off from Kourou with these two innovative and powerful passengers on board. Good evening. So, David, you're one of Ariane Espace's leading space experts, and you'll be our guide tonight, helping us to understand each stage of tonight's flight. But right now, if you're okay, let's go to uh, Kourou, where uh, Stefan Israel, Ariane CEO of Space, our Ariane's CEO, is waiting for us. Uh, Stefan Israel, uh, we have a look. Yeah, hello. How are you doing, Stefan? Welcome on Road to Space. Hello. Good evening. I'm fine now. Sorry. Well, so Stefan, uh, today's mission will be the first Ariane 5's launch of the year and I understood that you have two very special passengers today. Indeed, we start uh, tonight uh, the Ariane 5 year with uh, two special guests and very loyal customers to Ariane Space. We have on board uh, Measat 3D for Measat and uh, the journey with Measat has started in 1996. It was the first Measat satellite we launched and tonight this will be the fourth we will be launching. And we have also a satellite for uh, India and its new uh, space organization, ENSIL, a satellite built by uh, ISRO, the Indian Space Agency, JSAT 24. And tonight it will be the 25th satellite we will be launching for uh, India. The journey has started in 1981. Well, so that's an incredible track record. But what can you tell us about today's flight? Yes, so we are now in the final operations before the launch. The launch shall open now, shall happen now in a few minutes. Uh, the day has been very smooth for the parameters so far, but uh, it's not done yet, uh, are green, so let's be a little bit patient. And uh, we will have a launch of uh, almost 40 minutes. We will uh, lift off towards the east. The first passenger to be separated will be uh, Measat after 28 minutes. And just before the end of the mission, it will be the turn of GSAT 24. Yes, there those are the images. Listen so here. yes, Ariane 5 will lift off uh, from uh, Guru in the northeastern coast of South America. At 8.0, the, the Vulcan engine of the main stage will ignite. And once we have checked that uh, the engine is working fine, the solid propellant boosters will be ignited and will lift off at seven seconds afterwards. The launcher will climb and then perform a gravity turn, progressively tilting the trajectory towards the east. After 2 minutes and 20 seconds, the boosters will be separated, having finished their job. Around 1 minute later, the fairing will be jettisoned once the launcher has reached a high enough altitude so that the fairing is no longer needed. And you see on the world map the, the towers and the little dots. These are the tracking stations that will follow the launcher along its trajectory. At 8 minutes and 40 seconds, the main stage will have finished its job and the engine will shut down and we separate uh, from the upper stage. A few seconds later, the, the upper stage engine will ignite the HM7B. It will burn for more than 15 minutes, uh, shutting down once the targeted orbit is reached at uh, 25 minutes and 36 seconds. After that, the upper stage uh, will start a series of maneuvers to give Neosat 3D the correct orientation and the satellite will be separated at a bit before 29 minutes. Uh, minutes later, the, the SILDA, the double launch structure, will separate and it will open the way for GISA 24, which will separate uh, approximately 40 minutes after launch. And after that, the launcher uh, will begin its passivation, emptying its uh, propellant tanks to avoid any pressure from building up 
and uh, reducing also the lifetime in orbit. Yes, this panel gives the, the status of all the different systems that are needed for the launch. Uh, so all the lights need to be green for the, for the launch to, to, to happen. If anything happens, uh, one of the lights will turn red and then we may have to stop the countdown to solve the problem and, and come back to the launch. So you can see, for example, the status of the launcher, of the satellites, of the launch base, of the telemetry network and uh, the radars and of course the weather. The weather is one thing we cannot control. What's the weather like tonight? For the time being, all, everything is green, so we should be able to launch. Okay, David, I have an information. So, yes, we are uh, commenting a uh, green panel. So, even if everything is green, the information I just got is we are going to delay the, uh, the launch of the rocket just 15 minutes. So, what I suggest is we can have a look at the, uh, the sum up, what we will be explaining, what we will be watching tonight, and we'll be coming back shortly to comment this launch that is just postponed, just 15 minutes. It happens. Let's have a look at tonight's menu and we'll come back very soon. So David, we're only a few minutes from uh, liftoff. So what is happening right now to the two passengers at this time? Final lanceur, le nouvel I0 est 21h50, 00, temps universel. Yes, so we just... Yes, so that's we the just, DDO we've just been hearing. 
Right, we just heard the DDO announce the, the start of a synchronized sequence yeah. and the new lift of time, which will be uh, in 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So, uh, yes, in this uh, last minutes, uh, we will have the, the final uh, pressurization of the tanks, uh, of, the, of the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen tanks. Uh, we will start in a few in a few seconds, a few minutes, the opening of the valves that would feed the main engine with uh, with propellants. And uh, shortly before liftoff, we will have a hand on handover uh, from the uh, ground equipment to the launcher, who would, will control the power and the uh, all the last steps before liftoff. Of Those course, yes. So here we have the arrival of uh, our first passenger, Miasat 3D arrived in Kourou by, by boat. The container was transferred to the spacecraft preparation facilities in the space center, where it was unload, unloaded uh, in the clean room facilities. After that, uh, the inspection and testing of the, of the spacecraft, the satellite was mated on the, on the flight adapter and then it was fueled. And the second spacecraft you see here coming out of uh, an Indian C-17 airplane uh, it was also transferred to the spacecraft uh, preparation facilities for testing and then mating here on the um, launcher uh, adapter. Uh, after that, the, the, the spacecraft was fueled as well. And after that, it was transferred to the uh, final assembly building where the Ariane 5 launcher was being prepared in parallel. Here you see GSA-24 being put on top of uh, Ariane 5. Uh, after that, uh, the fairing that you see here was mated with the double launch uh, structure uh, and put on top of uh, Miasat 3D, which is the upper passenger. And the whole stack was then assembled on top of the launcher. The uh, logos of our customers that were uh, put on the uh, fairing, this is one important point, of course. And uh, finally, uh, when everything is ready, uh, the launcher and the spacecraft, uh, yes, just today, uh, the, uh, the launcher came out, was brought out of the uh, final assembly uh, building and was transferred to the uh, launch pad where the, the operations started yesterday to, to prepare the launch. Who are both waiting patiently for the green light to lift off. We are now exactly 2 minutes and 50 seconds from the lift off. What are the next steps before the launch? Yes, so right now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the final tests are being done. Uh, all the uh, valves uh, are starting to, to be open and to be checked. And uh, yes, in, in a few minutes, the, the control of the, of the operations will be handed over to the launcher. And so we will have the, the, we're watching the countdown two minutes away from the, the, the launch. Um, and as we come down to T minus two minutes, 10 seconds and counting, we want to see in the chat, as always here on the launch pad, you can see a go, no, go. You can write that in the chat, or if you're a TLP member, use those emojis. Thank you so much, Angry Astronaut, for that $5 super chat. I really do appreciate that and appreciate you being here uh, and supporting us in that way. Love what you do as well. So awesome to see you in here. Uh, coming down T minus one minute, 45 seconds and counting uh, until liftoff during a launch? Yes, I have been in the Jupiter room, but I have uh, mostly been in the CDL3 room, uh, which is the bunker located uh, close to the launch pad. In this control room, we have the operation quality and engineering teams that are, that are following the last operations. And by the way, I take the opportunity to say hi to them, even if I know that at this time they are fully focused on what they're doing. Let I don't know if we have uh, the possibility to watch the Jupiter room because we see all the people in the Jupiter room moving to the windows. Well, uh, this is our, those are the people. Attention pour moins une minute. So we just we just had an image of an image of people watching. Yes. Because people are attending over no, there. I zero moins une minute. Yes. One minute from the liftoff. That's right. DDO has just announced the countdown. 
Let's immediately go to the green panel on our screen, make sure all is good, David. Yes, yes, for the time being, everything continues to be green, so uh, we're still go for lunch. And now we are 42 seconds from the ignition. So this is the moment we've been all waiting for. Let's watch, let's cross fingers, and let's, let's enjoy the show, because it's always incredible. Yes. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage des EAP, décollage. Propulsion nominale, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Well, we have just seen Ariane 5 disappear into space. Do stay with us, everyone, because what's going to happen next is as crucial as the launch. This is, of course, the moment when the two satellites, GSAT-24 and MIRSAT-3D, are placed into orbit. David, you are our space expert tonight. Ariane 5 still has a long way to travel before the separation of the two satellites. Where and when will this happen, and how many kilometers away from the launch site? Yes, we're, we're not quite there yet, yes. Um, MIASAT 3D will, will separate from the launcher in about 30 minutes, uh, 1,200 kilometers of Kenya. And uh, GSAT 24 will separate about 10 minutes later above the Pacific Ocean, about 38,800 kilometers. I imagine that everything is minutely calculated and programmed so that the satellites find their position themselves. So what can you tell me, David, is the role of the team in Kourou at this stage? Yes, indeed, as I said, everything is controlled by the onboard computer on the launcher. So the team in Kourou, uh, this is what we are hearing right now, they are receiving data from the launcher through the tracking stations and they are checking that everything is, uh, accord is going according to, to what was foreseen. Well, I'm just focusing on those images, incredible yeah, images, incredible. I'm just uh, watching. So it was really impressive. And it's really night, 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 nice night. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's clear okay. skies. Just before the, the satellites find their, their fun... I'm interrupted because we, are, we, we have are video, here. everything is okay. Yes. Uh, before the satellites find their position in orbit, uh, 36,000 kilometers above our head, David, what should we be focusing on? So right now, yeah. yes, we, we just had the separation of the boosters. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. It's incredible. incredible. Yes, yeah. we have very good images tonight. We have. Uh, That's the very, first very time we see it skies. so clearly. The That's first time incredible. It really is. So the launcher is at an altitude of about 70 kilometers and traveling about 7,000 kilometers per hour right now. We will also. We've just heard the, um, the DDO has announced the uh, the fairing super separation. Yes. So why we don't need it anymore? Now the, the launcher has now reached an altitude uh, around 110 kilometers where the atmosphere is really thin and therefore we get rid of the fairing which was there to protect the satellites uh, from the atmosphere and from the liftoff. I'm going to ask you David probably to comment on them. Yeah, so we can see, we can see on, the, on the screen what we have because we don't have this replay right now but we have on the right, so this is the 3D images. Yeah, so this is the, the situation of the launcher right now with uh, the main stage uh, that is uh, functioning right now and that will continue to, to function for a few minutes, yes. And for the people that are watching us, all the information we see, they see on the low part of the screen. What is this? So yes, you have there the, the, the altitude uh, of the launcher at this time. So you see it's about 160 kilometers. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. We are at T plus 6 minutes, 15 seconds and counting since Ariane Spass has launched an Ariane 5 from the French Guiana 
Current altitude 166 kilometers, traveled over 750 kilometers downrange already, traveling 4.10 uh, kilometers a second. We're expecting first payload separation to occur at T plus 28 minutes uh, and the next payload to deploy about 10 minutes after that, uh, completing today's mission. So a rather quick one for an Ariane 5. Uh, on the bottom of your screen to see the understand the few graphs that you're seeing, the bottom left one somewhat under our logo, that is showing the trajectory uh, for how far downrange and how far in elevation uh, the Ariane 5 has traveled. So you can see it's kind of leveled out now, it's going to be picking up some speed uh, and traveling more horizontally than it is increasing its uh, altitude. The second screen is tracking uh, all the ground stations Ariane 5 will pass through uh, during its mission as well as those deployment points. It's hard to see but there is a little green dot uh, on the left side just above South America. That is the current location of the Ariane 5. You can see the ground stations that it is connected with uh, with those orange cones for communication. The blue boxes you see uh, to the east of Africa, those are the two deployment points. Uh, they're now showing that on an animation on the screen as well. Uh, but as we continue on, how having traveled over 1,100 kilometers down range at an altitude of 165 kilometers, uh, traveling now at 5.5 kilometers a second. And there we go. First stage separation has occurred and second stage ignition. So the main center core of the Ariane 5 has now separated, is making its way back to Earth. Uh, and the second stage has ignited. The second stage can burn for about 945 seconds. Uh, and now you'll see on that bottom left graph in the bottom corner, uh, an Ariane 5, you'll see that line wiggle. Sometimes it'll even lower its altitude to pick up more speed before it increases its altitude. Uh, so keep an eye close on that. Now about a quarter of a way across the Atlantic Ocean, traveling at just under 7 kilometers a second, having covered over 1,770 kilometers, uh, still maintaining an altitude of about 164, 165 kilometers. So we'll expect to see that increase here over the coming minutes ahead of deployment. Deployment expected, the first deployment 20 minutes from now at T plus 28 minutes. Second deployment right around that 38 minute mark as well. John, thank you so much for another super chat there. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. I should send you our GoFundMe. That way more of that comes to us and not to YouTube. Uh, GoFundMe link should be in the description. Uh, if, if, if you like it, you don't need it. But if uh, YouTube takes 30%, we want to be open and honest with that. Uh, so if you guys like to support us, you can do so uh, by uh, doing over on the GoFundMe. If it's a, a larger donation, that way your money goes to what you're hoping it goes for um, there. Uh, angry astronaut spot on regarding the footage. The French do things differently than the rest of us and generally don't care what the rest of the world thinks. It is frustrating, but they do things their own way and it's, it's okay. Uh, absolutely. There's, uh, there's no right or wrong necessarily launch coverage. Uh, there's what we want and what we get, uh, but uh, you're spot on there. Uh, some incredible footage here from the liftoff. There's an engine cam. Uh, of Ariane 5 lifting off 11 minutes ago from ELA-3 at the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana, uh, lifting off two communication satellites, one for India and one for Malaysia, both to provide uh, communications and video downlink um, for their regions. One will cover all of India and the other will cover a uh, larger portion of Asia. Deepod Dolphin, that is a very great question. Why could we not see the launch cameras live? Um, yeah, I see Twitter's kind of blowing up about that too. Uh, great question. Great question. Well, we'll work on getting a TLP crew member down to uh, the French Guiana uh, for some of these launches in the future. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So on October 11th, Bordeaux Metropole will hold its second aeronautics summit, an event gathering leaders of the sector, political researchers, entrepreneurs and investors. They will meet to affirm their progress in terms of ecological transition. So David, what about space? How do we protect environment in space? Yes, it's clear that in particular with the arrival of, of very large constellations in low Earth orbit, 
everyone has to play the game and they have to follow, everybody has to follow international regulations and make sure that all elements are deorbited at the end of their lifetime. And so Ariane Space has already demonstrated a responsible attitude towards space debris. Concretely, what are they doing? Yeah, so Ariane Space became one of the first uh, companies to sign the Net Zero Space Charter, which is uh, designed to reduce the, mm -hmm. the debris in orbit by 2030 and to foster more sustainable use of space. On our launchers, we have demonstrated uh, this responsible attitude with the upper stages for, for Vega, for Soyuz, and soon for Ariane 6. The upper stages are deorbited uh, when launching to low Earth orbits. On Ariane 5, uh, the upper stage performs maneuvers at the end of the, its mission to reduce the perigee and the apogee, and this helps to reduce the time it remains uh, in orbit. Okay, we will talk a little bit later in Road to Space about Ariane 6. Just before, just a word, uh, how the new launcher is more sustainable? Yeah, so the, the upper stage of Ariane 6 has a reignition capability okay. that will allow it to, to clear the operational orbits. So most of the time by deorbiting it, uh, but or by transferring it to, to a safe uh, graveyard orbit. Okay, the European Space Agency recently named a startup Clear Space in charge of the world's very first mission to demonstrate how to remove large space debris starting in the uh, 2025. Do you think that they will pave the way to a new market involving the deorbiting of space debris? Yes, it's clear that the sustainability of space it will require, on the one hand, for all the actors to, to, to play the game and to, to follow the rules and to follow regulations to avoid adding additional debris. And on the other hand, it will require missions like the one that uh, Clear Space will perform to go and catch uh, debris in orbit, which represent a risk. So Ariane Space, of course, is ready to provide the launch services for these kind of missions uh, to, to go and, and, and get some debris in orbit. Okay, so Ariane 5 is now on its way. It still has a long way to go before Miasat 3D and GSAT 24 separate from the launcher. In the meantime, let's have a look at some questions we receive on the social network. David, okay, huh? we have a question for you tonight. This one comes from, it, appear, it appears just behind Leticia. us. Leticia. Leticia, how long did it take to build Ariane 5? Yeah, so building Ariane 5, uh, it starts way back, roughly, roughly three years before the launch, when the first pieces of metal, the first uh, screws are built, and progressively more and more complex systems are, are assembled, leading to the manufacturing and the assembly of the stages that are then shipped to, to French Guiana, and finally it takes about six weeks uh, in Kourou, to do the final assembly and to integrate the satellites for the launch. So once all those different elements of the rocket have been built over Europe, how are, are they transported to Kourou? Well, by boat, I guess. Yes, yes, in the end by boat. All the elements are transported first by road or by river boat to, to several main harbors around Europe, uh, in France, in the Netherlands, in Italy. And from there, Ariane Space has two boats that go across the Atlantic and that transfer all the, all the stages uh, for the launches. Okay, thank you very much, David. Uh, well, we are now less than six minutes away from the separation of the first satellites. And of course, uh, we'll be going live to the Jupiter room uh, in Kourou just before. Uh, let's find out about the latest development on Ariane 6. Uh, we will have some images and same job for you. Can you come in, please, all those images? Yes, yeah, so these images are from January this year. So we have in this boat the two first Ariane 6 mm -hmm. liquid propellant stages that uh, arrived at the European spaceport. This arrival meant it was the beginning of what we call the combined test. Uh, so for the first time, Ariane 6 launcher components will meet the, the launch pad in order to test both of them together in real life conditions including firing of the main engine of the launcher 
So after a short road trip, the containers arrived in, in this building, de the Ariane 6, de brand new Kenya. launcher assembly building. This, is, this building is completely different from the one that you, that's used for Ariane 5 today because Ariane 5 is assembled vertically while Ariane 6 is assembled horizontally. Right now, the launcher uh, that will be used for this combined test uh, is being assembled in this building. And a few hundred meters away, you can see the launch pad with its uh, huge mobile gantry. Here, tests have been performed as well using a launcher mock-up you see in the images. And uh, all the propellant system has been tested, including the large cryogenic arms that you see here. They will open a few moments before liftoff of Ariane 6. And we have similar, uh, this is for the upper stage, and on the lower stage there are similar systems that you see here that are, that are protected by these uh, metal boxes. Well, if you've been following us, you'll know that Ariane 5 lifted off 23 minutes ago from the European Space Center in Kourou. So we're now very close to the first separation. In less than five minutes, Miasat 3D will be put into geostationary transfer orbit to reach an altitude of 36,000 kilometers. Thank you. And now let's concentrate up on what is happening next, David. I'm sure you have some additional information to give us. Yes, so in a few seconds, we're very close to the, uh, the, the end of the, the upper stage. The upper stage engine should shut down uh, shortly, meaning that the targeted orbit has been reached. Uh, and so after that, there will be a series of maneuvers that will begin to prepare for the release of uh, the uh, upper passenger. Well, I don't know what they're saying in your earpiece, but we were going to about to lose Libreville. Yes, we lost Libreville. Yes, as you see on the on the world yeah. map, we are, let's say, somewhere uh, half halfway across Africa, and therefore we have lost connection with the first station, which was in Libreville in Gabon. Yes. And before the next stage of tonight's flight, which is the separation of Miasat 3D. Well, so now it's time to go back and to stick to live because we are a few minutes away from uh, Miasat 3D separation from uh, IN5. David, what news do you have from Kourou about this uh, first separation that is about to happen? Yes, it should, should happen in a few seconds. Uh, the launcher has now finished uh, the maneuvers to give Miasat 3D the, the correct orientation. And uh, yes, in a few seconds, we should have a confirmation of the separation. Uh, Which is a really important step. It is indeed a very important step, yes. Well, let me remind you all that Miasat is the premium supplier of communication and video services to leading broadcasters, director home platforms, and telecom operators in Malaysia. There we go, we have now the confirmation. Yeah, that's perfect. And so you were telling the separation. Of yeah. 3D is one of the most important stages of tonight's flight, isn't it, guys? Another one is when the satellite links up to the operator, and Miasat will be looking forward to this momentous moment. Oh, they are clapping. Yeah. Where they can finally celebrate the end of the mission. David, for the moment, all the teams in Kourou seem to, there's thumbs up, they seem to be very happy. Yes, but uh, indeed, it's, it's a very good moment for, for Miasat, but uh, the mission is not over yeah. yet. And this is why we see in the Jupiter, I mean, if you have people tapping, but most of the per people, most uh, of the others are not. They're very staying serious. Staying focused, staying focused. Yes, so the launcher now will do a few maneuvers to uh, release the SILDA, the level launch structure, and then after that it will do some additional maneuvers to, to release the, the second passenger today, GSA-24. Well, the DDO has so uh, confirmed the separation of the SILDA. We are now 10 minutes away from the second separation, GSAT 24. No. Separation SILDA, uh, yeah. système de lancement double, there we go. Ariane. I have information, you don't yeah, have. Yeah, no, he yeah, has actually, his only I'm, little earpiece. I'm, I was confused. I was confusing. Uh, yeah, so now we have this confirmation, yes. So, which means we are 10 minutes away from the second separation, GSAT 24, a first demon driven communication satellite mission undertaken by the New Space India Limited. So, 
all teams, as we said, in cool remain focused. Among them, we have the CVI. First, to, to put GSAT 24 in the right uh, orientation for the release. So we are now about uh, 3,500 kilometers above the Indian Ocean, just uh, not very far from India, and with a speed of, yes, close to 7.3 kilometers per second. So does this separation signal the end of the mission? That's what we want to know. Well, this separation will be the last operation performed by the launcher, but uh, as I said before, after that we will wait for the confirmation of, uh, of the acquisition of a signal from the customer. And at what time will this happen? Well, this should happen about 10 to, to 12 minutes after the, the uh, separation of GSA 24. So all the teams we are waiting, they are waiting patiently in Kourou. They must be on tender hooks. This is a huge moment for them. Yeah, yes, we're GSA 24. The second separation. Just waiting for Raymond yeah. Boyce, the yes. DDO. To we have the confirmation that, yes, as you see in the images, the launcher has finished the maneuvers and therefore the separation will happen shortly. So you have the confirmation yet, because I'm waiting now until the DDO. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, so this is the DDO, and he has just confirmed the separation of GSAT 24. This is a great news, and this is why we can see all those people clapping and... Uh, Applauding the success of the yeah, mission. Yeah, that's an incredible time, so yeah, that's it. Why is this confirmation uh, really uh, important? And why are we waiting for a, a signal acquisition? Yeah, so the, the satellites, uh, after separation, they need some time uh, to switch on their systems, to start deploying the, their solar panels. And once they do that, they will, let's say, call home. So they will establish a contact with their ground stations uh, to confirm that uh, the satellites are in good health. So okay. this, but what will the satellites do after contact has been established with the station? Well, they will begin a series of, of uh, tests and maneuvers that will take a few days uh, to turn on all the systems, to check that all the systems are functioning correctly. And uh, yes, basically, that's what will happen. And then what happens? How do they reach their final orbit? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, they will use their own engine, their own propulsion system, to, to accelerate once uh, when they're at the apogee of the, of the orbit in order to, to transfer to the final geostationary position. Well, let me remind you all that the second satellite, GC, GSAT-24, was built by the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization for NSIL, and will provide the Indian subcontinent with high quality telecommunication and direct broadcast satellite services. Did you have something to add? Yes, the, uh, for us, Ariane Space, it's yes, uh, we are proud to say that it is the 25th uh, Indian satellite that we launch. Well, David, you have been lucky enough to go inside the Jupiter room many a time, I think, and in the CDL3 many times. How would you describe the ambiance, the atmosphere here at this stage of the mission? It must be electric. Yes, so having released the satellites at this point, there is a, a feeling of, of relief, uh, a feeling of mission accomplished. But of course, everyone is uh, eagerly waiting for the last uh, confirmation from the customer that the signal has been acquired, which confirms the, the definite success of the mission. I hope we once will have the opportunity to be there. Uh, it's now uh, more than a 14 minutes since IR-5 took off from the European Space Center in Kourou. Let's take another look at some incredible images of tonight's liftoff. Let's have a look at this replay. It's always an incredible moment and the launch we've been attending today was... We witnessed today was incredible. We witnessed today, yeah. It was incredible. Those are the images we saw. It was not dark night. No, yes, it was, uh, it was sunset. Uh, uh, I was uh, lucky myself to, to see one of these launches once, uh, a sunset uh, launch with very clear skies, and uh, it, was, uh, it was definitely feeling and hearing uh, the launch. You, see, you feel the vibrations. Uh, I was uh, located uh, five kilometers from the launch pad, and it, it is definitely an amazing, an amazing view, an amazing sight. 
and I was able to see, like today, uh, the flight up to Booster's operation. So it was really, really amazing. I had uh, tears in my eyes. Wow. Is it always special? It is always the same? It is it's different one launch from the other? Uh, unfortunately, I have only seen once uh, this launch uh, from outside. Usually yeah. the other launches I have been inside the, the control room. But uh, yes, it, uh, it definitely depends on the, the conditions, the, atmos the, the atmospheric conditions and the weather, yes. Acquisition GSAT par les stations. So we hear the DDO and at the same time we're watching all those uh, images we had. Yes, so Very we had cool. the confirmation from the DDO that GSAT 24 has been acquired by its ground stations. Okay. So far so, so good. So Everything. far so good. This is really, really good news for the teams working so hard on this campaign. Um, so David, you've participated in many launch preparation campaigns. Apart from takeoff, what for you is your the best moment of a mission? Yes. Yeah, so the, during these uh, launch preparation campaigns that last several weeks, uh, after these intense moments of the of the countdown and the launch, uh, the best moments, of course, are after the, the the release of the passengers once the mission has been accomplished. It's a big moment with all the, the launcher teams and uh, after the, these weeks of intense work that is not always easy, so it's it definitely seeing everybody happy is, is, is a great satisfaction. Well, we certainly saw everyone happy tonight. Yes, and also with the customers, uh, seeing the customers after the launch uh, and seeing how uh, their satisfaction and gratitude, it's, it's definitely a great moment. Well, let me remind you that later on tonight we will have the pleasure of talking to Arians versus customers. We'll be linking up with Mr. Radhakrishnan Duraraj, Chairman and Managing Director of NSIL, and also with Mr. Sankaran Mutusami, Director UR Satellite Center at ISRO. Yes, Emma, and we are currently waiting for the MISA 3D acquisition that should happen in the next five minutes. And I have another question about the environment. Uh, how is it cleaned, the launch pad, after the ignition? Uh, does it need to be cleaned? Uh, is it watered? How does it work? Yeah, the, 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 w the launch is, of course, there is a, uh, it's a very harsh environment. There is a lot of uh, uh, hot temperatures, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, pressure, and. And therefore, yes, after the launch, there is a big inspection that is done of all the launch area, making sure that, okay, pieces have not been broken or if there are things that need to be exchanged. And yes, everything is cleaned and, and let's say... And, and from what I know, the water is recycled and, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a really an important point. Yes, the water, the water that is used in particular to, to, uh, to dump the, the sound during liftoff, it's, it's water that is collected in a, it's rainwater that is collected in a tower right next to the launch pad. And yes, this water is, is, is Okay, we should definitely make a report about that part because it's, you know, I like those little stories behind the big stories. Everybody is focusing on the, on the rocket, but we have many things. Oh, why is everybody slapping? Yes, we had the confirmation from Miasat. Miasat acquisition. Yes. Brilliant. Well, so that's a really good news. We're watching. Well, congratulations. Every, yeah, congratulations. Everybody. Well done, David. Well done to their teams. This is going to be a moment when I think we'll be going back to yeah, the room. Yeah, definitely, because it's uh, we're just uh, we're letting have them having a few moments time, to yeah. uh, cheer up and celebrate, and uh, we will so, uh, connect to Kuru where Stefan Israel should be waiting for us. Not only him, there'll with, be loads of other yeah, people. Yeah, a lot of people, but firstly we'll have a communication with Stefan Israel. Um, so we can... He's ready, he will be, uh, he's probably checking hands or... And we will be... Okay. He must be very, very him. happy. Yeah, and with Baby. all the teams. Okay, Stefan, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you very well. Yes. Hello. So it's a, it's a, it's a good news. Everything went perfectly tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, it was a perfect launch tonight. 
Yes, it was a perfect launch tonight and uh, it's very important for us because uh, it is the fourth time we deliver for uh, Measat. It is the 25th time we deliver for uh, India, ISRO and for the first time Nessil. That was also an auxiliary payload uh, embarked uh, for Korea uh, on uh, the Measat uh, satellite. So uh, tonight we have done the job and uh, we are very uh, honored to have delivered. And so I'm sorry because you are focusing on tonight, but what's next? So just, I want uh, first to, to thank all uh, our customer partners for this launch because it's really a collective success. It's uh, led by Ariane Space, but with all uh, the European launcher family, CNES, uh, ISA, uh, Ariane Group for sure, our prime contractor. So thanks to uh, all of our partners, thanks to our customers. So what next? Uh, we will have uh, in July the maiden flight of Vegasi. It will be a very important event. And we will come back to the Guyana Space Center on September number the six for a key customer, UTELSAT, the satellite connect on board of IN5. And we will, we will be definitely with you in September for, uh, for this launch. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, have a nice day over there in, uh, in Guiana, in French Thank Guiana. You. Well, that was great to hear Stefan Israel's reaction after the completion of the mission. You, like him, David, must be feeling quite proud tonight.